Can you action. book now? You so can. If you're in, say, Corn. Lismore? Or Lismore, or yes. Well, Lismore, yes. We can give you the 008 number after the show. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, throw your caution to the wind and give a humongous pug-filled welcome for the final time in 1995 to the Stones, the Cedrics, the V8 dancers and Miss Jane Scarley and her contribution to the bug house tonight, The Last Dance. Let her rip, Jane! <laughs> Melanie Griffiths, Antonio Banderas, the love the child bun is in the oven arrangement of The Last Dance and a <laughs> tremendously sensitive rooting of it. Uh, it featured a very warm send off to a lot of faces that have bobbed into uh, the club buggery set uh, throughout the year. 
Uh, Roy, obviously, I don't know much about art, but by gee, I know what I like. And I, I have been very, very taken by this Henry Mees portrait, this work in Torbman's paint of Lady Di. Uh, I don't know whether we can get a picture of this now. Yes, there it is there. It's a tremendous bit of gear. It makes Di look everything that I think you and I know her as. <laughs> the scale of the picture is enormous. It's 1.5 hectares. Uh, the best vantage point is the moon to take in the full depth of what Henry Mees has done. Roy, some people say it makes her look a little butch. I, I disagree. I, I think the hours of the gym have paid off. It, it, it's, a, it's a strong personality coming through, through the torment, uh, especially when you're on the moon, as I was this week, and looking down on it there in Britain, it, it, it's an absolute cracker. Yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? It, it? You know, it reminds me of that sort of German expressionist Oscar Kokoschka sort of gear. It, it really uh, inverts the Dorian Gray Theme, yeah. doesn't it? There you had Dorian whose life was, you know, buggered it, and the painting sort of suspended it for a while. Here you've got Lady Di, her life is absolutely, totally buggered to the power of oblivion. <laughs> and uh, there's the painting telling you exactly what, it's super realism gone crazy, yeah. isn't it? And the odd thing is about it that she likes it. Yes. She likes that sort of weird German expressionist, brutalist sort of underpant on your head smelling of gear. gear. <laughs> now, Henry Mee, the Henry Mee story, Roy, I don't know much about it, but I like it a lot. He's a genius. Uh, he is he? a genius, yes. Uh, you know, his best work's done with a roller about this wide. Uh, <laughs> it, for the fine stuff, he just uses about a, well, a roller about this wide. Uh, he's, a, he's a sort of left handed. Um, Wriggler. Wriggler, yes. <laughs> no, 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 I was going to say, he's a left handed Fra Francis Bacon. He likes it. I believe. He, 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 he paints with his date. Let's have a look at Two final point on it. Uh, the, up the back, and he doesn't actually see what he's constructed. Except in the mirror up on the roof. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Ah, uh, yes, and, uh, and more power to him. I, I want to have a look, you know, I'd love to see him go to, you know, have a go at some other luminaries around the place. It'd be tremendous to see... Uh, Solomon Lou. Yeah, what he might come up with, Big Sol. Uh, and now it's time to welcome a woman who got a head start in the caper by being born into a show business family. The business is in her blood and she looks none the worse for it. Nissan Cedric's, can you loosen the larynx and tighten the trouser and have a go at the Denny Hines story! <laughs> A singer, she's the daughter of a singer. She shines. Oh, ooh. I'm singing about a singer. She's a singer among singers. She shines. Oh, Jenny Hines, music in her blood. Thanks for coming in, Denny. Now, there's a lot of chat around the place about the album. Uh, it seems to be taking a long time to come out. Yes, now, I understand, lots of years. I understand there's a bit of a problem, uh, you know, but there's no point going for the Guinness Book of Records as the longest album ever taken to produce. No, 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 no. I was just a bit constipated making the album. But yes, it's taken four years, but hey, all yeah. good things take time. Now, can I ask about the, uh, the Electra arrangement? Uh, originally, I understand. The, what arrangement? the Electra arrangement. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm. Whatever that is, but yeah. I understand you're assigned to an American record label. Yes. The American record label, according to a prominent Sydney DJ, refused to pay you per diems. So you I walked in there with attitude and said, pay me. Yes. And they didn't. I said, bye. And you were able to escape the contract because they... And refused. I still got paid. Yes, you paid out on the contract. Mm -hmm. uh, because they wouldn't pay the per diems. Why wouldn't they pay the per uh, well, diems? See, I, they were really stupid because they had me in New York, but they kept giving me these checks for my bank that was in LA, uh -huh. that is five hours flight. So anytime I want to get money, it's like, I have to get on a plane and fly. But so, and they just, and I was there for three months and I had no money and I just had it. I'm a Virgo woman and if I don't get what I want now, you know about it. <laughs> yes, uh, Denny, you left uh, the high school you were at because it was a little bit heavy. Yes, it was. 
<laughs> yes. Yes, things changed. What do you think? You'd like to go back now and your attitude would be absolutely bloody poop. <laughs> it would be. Yeah, I had to um, get out of my first high school because of Mum's success. Mm. The other kids, like, they were very strange. Mm. Uh, yeah, very strange. Like, I at one point got held up with um, a knife. Uh, actually, uh, scissors. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's when I thought, I'd just, I'd just step out for a minute and go to a nice convent school. Got kicked out of that and, um, <laughs> and then I went to another public school and left. Oh, mm. gee. We should have a little look at uh, a preview of the single from the album, which is, is coming out a little bit later in the year. And this was your performance at the ARIA Awards. Yes. We, we should have a bit of a look at that. Sure. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Denny, Denny, how did you, how did you come up with such a new sound? Uh, a new sound? I don't know. You'd have to ask my producer. I didn't actually write this track. Right. My producer is Ian Green, and he's um, a legend, 25-year-old man who spends, I'd say, 50% of the time in the studio, and the other 50% making babies because he's got children for days. Right. And um, he came up with the sound, and he wrote it with a lady from America, and I was like, it was the first song I heard, and I liked the lyric because they're dirty. Do you like the dirty, dirty lyrics? Yeah. Now, is that what you look for in a song, dirty lyrics? <laughs> if Roy and me coughed up a dirty lyric song... Which I'd sing it we could... for you, don't? Thanks. That's very kind of you. Have well, really now, dirty, though. You know, the songwriting is a trick because, obviously, it's the building block mm. of success and, uh, you know, the, the songs have to be quite right. Now, who? How is that one of the problems that you've had, is finding songs that you feel it appropriate? It is very hard, yeah, because this I've written three songs on the album, but... Mm -hmm. um, when you're asking, when you're making an album and you're sending out messages to people who don't actually know you yeah. and they're trying to write a song for you, you have to go through a big process of elimination and it was just ridiculous. It got, I mean, I had song submissions for days and none of them were for me. But when I got to London, my producer had spoke to me on the phone before I arrived, so he sort of knew where I was coming from. Then he met me, so he had some songs that he'd written and then we wrote together as well, so... Denny, how do you write a song? Uh, I mean, do you start with smutty, loody ideas? Uh, <laughs> is, is that how it is in your case? So you, you come up I with dirty words like, I don't know, smear. Uh, pap. Oh, well, pap if you like. <laughs> uh, well, let's face it, it's all pap. Um, uh, how, do you, how do you do it? How do you start? Where do you start? With, with a melody? With an I idea? I start with a groove. Myself, I with start a groove. with a groove. Oh, a yeah. groove is like bass and drums. Mm -hmm. um, and then, because there's no melody, you can sort of mess around. You can go anywhere you want, and then yeah. you come. Yes. Would you mind oh, no, there, there, don't, don't worry. There are people just rabbiting on oh, in the right. background. Um, yeah. And then you just go with. I mean, I don't know. I'm not really the person to ask. I'm no Lennon and McCartney. I've written three songs. Yes. But um, you know. Denny, you started out modelling, did you? Now, how was modelling? I, I mean, my experience of modelling is that it's, you know, you, you go along and they say, give us a look at your fingers, give us a look at your fingernails, now let's have a look at your teeth. Now, uh, could you take the trousers off and bend down? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, how was it for you? Um, modelling for me was a, just a really good excuse to get out of school and make some serious cash. I mean, when you're 16 and someone offers you a stupid amount of money over education, you go, <laughs> what school? I'm going to go to work. Um, so I did it, but I only did it for two years. I needed to be stimulated and as a model, unless you're big time, you really don't get talked to, you get talked at and yes. people think you're stupid because you're a model. I mean, there may be some dumb models out there, but I'm far from dumb and they look, and men, no offence, I love guys, yes. but you go to castings and they're just sleazy and they just want to touch you and it's like, back off. Yes. So I left. <laughs> <laughs> So you decide to write dirty songs instead. <laughs> yeah. It all makes sense in a funny sort of way to me. Now, uh, how would you compare, this may take more than 25 words to answer, you know, say Australian musical sort of activity with English musical activity where you've been for some time, given that we've written America off earlier in the interview? <laughs> well, England is very much like Australia because, you know, obviously we were colonised by them. But I, I actually can't answer the, the musical question because I've been out of the country for seven months. I came back and I was like, who is this Meryl Bainbridge? I mean, I don't oh. know who she, I don't know who, but the music here is very, uh, do you know? No, 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 I'm with you. No, no, I'm saying, yes, yes, I mean, so it changes so quickly, the you're right. No, but it, the music here is very similar to the music in, in England. You get a lot more English infiltration here. You get a lot of Engli um, American as well. But I myself am more for the English sound because yes. they, they want to use live instruments, whereas America, if you say to a producer live, they go, what? Mm. You go drummer, you go, huh? Mm. 
they don't really know what that is. Mm. Mm, gee, that must be a problem. It is. Mm. When you, they say guitar and, and they you look go, at your blankly, keyboards and they look at your blankly. Yeah. Yes. Trombone. Drum machine, they know exactly yeah. what you're talking about though. Yes. Speaking of drum machines, it's now time to play a game with uh, uh, Denny and it's uh, this very interesting Australian artiste. We have a terrific range of prizes on offer as usual, including Denny's new single. Uh, which isn't actually out yet, but this is the cover art of it, and uh, there's a different record inside, which makes it more, even more interesting <laughs> in a funny sort of way. There's the uh, Steve War Diary yes. uh, from the West Indies. There's, of course, the plate the world wants. That's the <laughs> Ian plate, and if I'm lucky enough, there'll be a certificate of authentication inside there with Royal HG signature there, and. Uh, just a quick reminder of those who are after a plate, we've managed to secure in front of Franklin Mint another 145 firing days, so there are plenty of plates on the way. We've got the Allen Border uh, CD there, we've got the new cricket book, God it goes on and on and on, but it is the final show. The Jimmy Maxwell edited Australian cricket book there for the coming year, and finally, in a new form, colourway wise, the shirt that's bringing peace to the world. Uh, there it is. I can't quite get it in the light quite right. Uh, it's obviously the giant of the jig cord shirt. Obviously, a number of people don't like wearing red. Well, now we've got it in a sort of bottly green, off bottly green uh, colour. And, of course, the front there with all the club buggery uh, officials uh, listed in order there. Uh, Roy, yes, who I, will I, Denny be playing yes, for? Yes, I also... I, sorry, I'm just signing to Steve War. Uh, <laughs> you'll be playing... And also there's, uh, of course, Bob and Blanche's wedding, which is in the news at the moment again, I notice. Uh, this is the kangaroo pool, the sports pool, which is available and uh, is uh, creating world peace again. Uh, best wishes, Adrian, signed Steve. Well, you're playing for Adrian Allen, who's 17 today and in the club with us. Where are you, Adrian? Where's it? Ah, oh, congratulations. Yes, he's there with us. Now, what you uh, must do, Denny, is identify this very, very fine Australian artiste. Let's have a look at his work now. Beautiful little number. It's a very engaging. Well, it's not probably dirty enough for you, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it, Denny? Is it Ian Turpy? It's Ian oh, Turpy! Wow. Let's have a look. Oh, there's that guitar. Unmistakable, that guitar. Yes, they wouldn't understand what that was in America. <laughs> Beautiful That's work beautiful there, and we've actually seen that guitar on uh, Club this Buggery. Show. Yeah. And the song, I understand, is available should you wish to cover it. And, oh, yeah. and can I change the lyrics? And I was just going to say, yes. if you want to root up the lyrics, that'll yes. be fine with terms. <laughs> and on that wonderful note, it's time to ask all Club Buggery viewers, whether here in the Rupert Murdoch Disgrace or there at home, to get them out and bang them and bang them until they hurt. And thank our final guest for 1995, Denny Hines! <laughs> Club Buggery, it's time to ask a couple of prominent Australian identities to uh, perform a song made famous by the great, great Dean Martin. And tonight we do it uh, in celebration of everybody who might be on the sick list this spring. Look, uh, I know uh, I can say this with all sincerity, Roy, that you and I are thinking of them, and uh, even though millions mightn't be. Tonight we're lucky enough to have in the bug house Mark Hunter and John Paul Young and their selection from the Dean Martin catalogue, Sway! <laughs> Like a flower bending in the breeze Bend with me, sway with ease When you dance you have a way with me Stay with me, sway with me Other dancers may be on the floor Dear, but my eyes will only see Smooth, 
Steve Wall was with us earlier this evening. He nodded in the direction of a couple of people who had made those extra hard yards appearance-wise here in the Rupert Murdoch disgrace this evening. And, of course, it's time for the meat tray. Roy, what have you managed to shoot this week that you've got stacked under this black cloth here tonight in the bug house? Uh, HG, I, I, this morning, uh, as it turns out, uh, I went up to uh, the Steggles factory. Yes. And... Uh, because I love going up there, it's very funny. And uh, there was uh, one specimen oh. that I spotted. It's a, it's a little beauty, it's a Rhode Island Red. A very, very engaging fella, and I just plucked him out of the line just before his uh, number was up. Uh, I, I, I've called him Roy after myself. Uh, <laughs> Roy the Rhode Island Red. He's uh, a lovely eating chook. Uh, you might have been eating him tomorrow had circumstances been different. But he's here tonight. He'll be going off tonight. And I've included as well, HG, as a precaution, uh, a few means you might like to use to get rid of him. Uh, here's one of my favourites. <laughs> It's a simple operation. You, you just get someone to hold his head there, and it's all—it's all—it's all over very, very quickly and very, very attractively for mine. Uh, there's the old stab. You can just get in, yeah, get in, get in, do him that way. Uh, you can do him as I used to do years ago. With the, with the axe, oh, yeah. just take the head off. It's very, very funny, especially if you just let him run around uh, without the head. That always works. Uh, rope, I I if you want to just do that way, or you can just ring him with your hands. Uh, or one that I think is a scream. Uh, I, I, I've got here, uh, courtesy of Dieter Brummer, uh, some reefers. I've got some reefers. Uh, I have a couple, of, a packet of Eki tabs. And I have some acid. <laughs> now, just try him with each of them. Uh, that is little Roy in here. Just give him the acid first, uh, then a couple of leggies, and then you give him a reefer, and it's, so, it's just tremendous. Uh, <laughs> he'll disappear very, very quickly. Now, this all goes Over here, you've done it. Congratulations, you've gone to so much trouble. And it's certainly paid off. There we are. Enjoy him. We're sitting on our car, sitting, thinking, drifting on our Cedric will survive But for now Goodbye Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
And now, ladies and gentlemen, a very magic moment in Australian television because we're going to give away this car. That's right. I think the finest car ever offered on Australian television. <laughs> the finest both in terms of its mark, its make and its quality. It's retained its quality just as though it had been driven out of the showrooms all those years ago in 1965. It's in tremendous nick. And we've obviously placed all the names of everybody here in the club buggery room this evening into a cup held at the moment by Ian Terps Turpy over here. Yes, he's out of the Lai Chi Lounge early this evening. <laughs> he's got the cup, he's got all the names in it, and Ted Mulray, the star of Ian, has offered to pluck the name of the person here tonight who will be driving home in this magnificent automobile. Drum roll, Charlie, please! And the winner is... The winner is... H.G. Nelson. This is a, uh, a dream come true. I, I, for once in my life, am absolutely stuck for words. I, it's I, a funny old world. It is a <laughs> boy. I, F46. That's yes, you. Yes, that's right. Red, look, I'm reminded of that tremendous night that I think Bob Hawke won the Lucky Door Prize when they opened the Canberra Casino, and I thought that could be rigged that sort of night. And I can assure everybody watching tonight that it won't be happening here a similar event or I've always sworn that that wouldn't happen. Ah. Roy, look, this is a moment uh, that I need to pause and think about. Jackpot! I, I believe that I am going to take the car and drive it away tonight. <laughs> I'm going to fiddle about with it over the summer holidays. I'm going to rotate the tyres. I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to give it a respray. But then next year, I'm going to donate it back to Club Buggery. <laughs> To be given away, to be given away, not to people who come and have the fun and pleasure of seeing the show up close, but to be given away by some means yet to be determined to the nation. I do this because I received a letter many months ago from a listener and a viewer in uh, South Australia. Her name was Kerry Brown, and she said it was an appalling indictment on the justice and the mechanism of the law in this nation that we could give away such a fabulous car, such a fabulous car in such fabulous condition to people who were only able to come in on Friday night, and why couldn't the nation be part of the process of winning it? So I've taken those thoughts on board, Kerry, and now, next year, 1996, Australia, will have a chance of winning, no bugger it further than that, I say Asia has a chance of winning this magnificent Cedric. Yes. Can I just say that's really very big of you. That's very, very big of you, H. Street. Roy, where are you off to this weekend? I'm off to Peter Shamara's Hill You're Club. not! I am. <laughs> Try and keep me away. Uh, I'm going to see the Parade of Talent show. Uh, it is a beauty. It's uh, starring Lou James, the very popular New Zealand uh, vocal performer. Uh, Sarah Middleton, uh, the vivacious young vocalist. And it was good to see Sarah in the Club Buggery audience last week. Tremendous performer. She, she really is worth the $2. Uh, Greg... <laughs> Greg Costello will be there. He's the very fine young vocal artiste. And the Chardonnays, my oh, favourites, yes. they're back. They split yeah. up for a little while, but they're back together and uh, humming beautifully. Uh, they're a lovely young vocal and variety duo. So that's all the parade of talent at the uh, Peter Shamara cell. Uh, just a couple of scores before we go. Uh, Perth, 97, have beaten the Melbourne Giants, 88. So in the NBL Grand Final. So uh, Perth won up there. And in the uh, women's water polo, Australia plays the world champs tomorrow, Hungary. And the World Cup champs, Netherlands, play Russia. So it's a very, very exciting uh, time at the Homebush Pool. Uh, Roy, obviously, it's a moment tinged with happiness and sadness that we come to the end of club buggery for a season. Uh, look, I want to thank you for your consistency of performance throughout the year. I believe you've put in week in, week out in the toughest variety competition in the world. I say that when you know that you can get that sort of artiste happening at the Peter Shem RSL mm. and across Australia and uh, all sorts of places. That's very generous. Uh, tremendous work from your good self there and, uh, you know, hopefully, God willing, we'll be able to be back here next year and give the car away all over. Yes, yeah, sure, Certainly, that's, that. that would be a tremendous <laughs> achievement. As we sign off from the Rupert Murdoch disgrace here for 1995...